Hey there, Dan Gastu here. In today's video, I'm going to reinforce the top box rack on the Himalayan. I'm gonna be carrying quite a bit of weight here. Just this fuel alone is five liters, so there's five kilos, plus the weight of the top box and anything I put in it. I've heard that quite a few of them been failing, so I thought I'd reinforce it before that happens. I'll quickly now just whip the top box off and then I'll bring you in and show you what I'm planning. While I'm here, I'm just gonna take the mounting plate off as well. It's made out of plastic. I'm gonna to have to weld the frame, so it's gotta come off. Now I've got the frame just back to factory. I'll show you what I'm planning. I have seen some racks reinforced by putting a bit of tubular steel that comes out, around and sort of up this way. What I'm going to do though is put just a flat plate triangular gusset in here. The reason I'm going to do that is because I also want to get these indicators out from behind the panniers. So that'll then give me a flat plate that I can mount the indicators higher up here. So it's going to end up serving a bit of a double purpose. In order to weld it in I'm going to have to grind these little pins off. But I'm not too worried about that because I've absolutely no idea why they're there. Feel free to comment if you know. I'm going to start by making a CAD template that I can then cut the steel to. So a bit of cardboard aided design. So I'm going to lay this behind, trace the angles I need and then see if I can test fit it. I'm just going to lay this on the outside and then trace it. Now I'm just gonna straighten the lines up, cut it out, test fit it, see if it needs tweaking. I think we're getting close with this kind of shape. Tracing it seemed to work pretty well. I can't quite get it perfectly in position because of these pins, and also it needs to be slightly rounded here, which is difficult to do with this thick cardboard. When I cut the steel, I'll do two straight cuts and then round this on a grinder though. To do a proper test fit though, I'm gonna to need to take these pins off now, and I'm gonna do that off the bike, so I'll get the frame off. Under the seat we've got two fasteners, then we've got two on the side, that's all that holds it on. Now they're out, we can take the rack off. So I'll go put it in the vise and the first thing I'll do is just grind these pins off. I'm going to start by using a cutting disc to cut them off and then I'm going to use one of these flat disc sand discs just to smooth it off. I've also got to take the paint or the powder coating off where I'm going to be welding, so once I've cut them off I'll grind all the paint along the area that I'm going to be welding to. Flap disc is just a whole lot of sort of overlapping bits of sandpaper essentially. So I'll use that to grind the rest of the paint and the stubs off. This is what it looks like now. You can actually see, if it focuses, you can actually see little circles where those pins were. So I'm thinking they were actually set into holes. So I'm glad we're sort of welding over the whole thing. Anyway, now I'll take the rest of the paint off and we'll test fit this template. That's all the grinding done now. Give it a bit of a wipe with acetone, clean it up. And now we'll do a bit of a test fit of cardboard. I've actually redone the template in some slightly thinner cardboard and I've just rounded the corner slightly so I can fit it in. This is how it's gonna go like this. And just fit in here. Hopefully, it's symmetrical, which it seems to be. So I can use the same template for both sides. All I'm gonna do now, trace around the template, cut it out with an angle grinder. Now I've got these two bits of metal cut out to the shape of the template. I'm gonna take them over to the grinding stone and do a few things. I'm going to bevel the edges a bit so that it's easier to weld and I'm also going to round the top here so that it fits into where the rack curves properly. I'll also probably bevel this bottom edge a little bit too. Even though it's not being welded, I just think it'll look a little bit more finished, that's all. So we'll head over and we'll do that now. This process is a really good opportunity to just fine tune things too. So as well as doing the bevel and rounding it, I'm just going in, doing a test fit, seeing where it's touching, coming back, grinding that bit down until it's a perfect fit. 
the less gap I have when I'm welding it, the better. It's pretty much done now. You can see the bevels and everything on the edges, rounded off. Now I'm just going to put it on the wire wheel just to get a little bit of this surface rust off before we weld it and paint it. All right, there we go, cleaned up a bit. So one of them has actually got a bit of mill scale on it. It's a newer piece, which is pretty solid. So I'm not actually gonna take that off. I'm gonna leave it on. It's obviously bare metal where I'm gonna be welding, but I figure it's probably just a bit of extra protection. With it sitting this way up in the clamp, it actually just sits on its own. I don't think it's gonna take much to knock it though, but I might try and just do a couple of tack welds rather than attempting any really awkward clamping. As with all welding, that very first, even that first tiny little tack has caused it to lift up a little bit. So I'm going to find a way of holding it down here, get a tack on the other side. So hopefully we can stop it distorting too much. So here I've just put one little tack up this end. It seems to be fitting pretty well along the whole length now. A little bit of a gap there, but I think we can fill that. And then just another little tack at this end. So I'll do a couple more tacks along the way and then we'll just weld the whole thing out. I don't want to distort this too much. I'm going to do a little bit of welding on the other side now, just to try and keep the heat balanced a little bit. So far so good. Got a little bit of a bead around the corner here, a little bit in the back here. I'm just going to keep alternating. I'm not the best TIG welder in the world, but I think it's going to be fine. It's going to be strong enough. In hindsight, because so much paint's burning off, I was a bit optimistic grinding so little off. If I was to start again, now I've seen it, I would probably actually take the rack off, do the grinding, get the whole thing sandblasted, then do the welding, then go and get it powder coated, just to avoid all those paint fumes because they're pretty toxic. It's a few days later now and I've got the rack back from the sandblaster, so it's all cleaned up. I decided that esophageal cancer wasn't really on my bucket list, so it was probably better off just to get it clean before I finish welding it. What I'm gonna do now though, is I've got the other piece, I'm gonna tack weld that on and that'll allow me then to do a bit of welding on one side, then let that cool while I weld the other side, and I'll keep alternating so one side doesn't ever get that hot. So we'll weld them out and see what it looks like. So far, so good. I'm not gonna weld all the way around for strength, it's more just so there's no little cavities for uh, water to go in. I finish off the welding now. It's got a bead all the way around inside and out. I'm just gonna let it cool off completely and then we'll start painting it. This is the primer I'm gonna be using. I've now got the stand just hanging up by a bit of wire, so we'll give this a good shake and then just give it a really light coat. When you're spray painting something, it's really important, A, to mix it properly to start with, and then also just to do good light coats. Give yourself about a 15 centimeter gap from the work, start spraying before you're on it, then just keep working across it with nice light coats. You won't get it opaque, like completely covered to start with, that's okay, if you do, it'll just run. So do a light coat, let it dry, another light coat, and just keep doing that. It's the only way you're gonna get a good finish on it. Another good option would be simply to send this off to get powder coated, which I was originally gonna do, but I've got the paint here. Done a few coats of this primer now, so now I'm gonna put the black on, which is uh, satin black. And here we have the finished product. I'll probably put two or three coats of the black on and I think it's looking pretty good. So we'll fix this back to the bike and then I'll put the top box back on. Just putting all these fasteners in loosely until they're all started. Gotta say I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I think it looks nice like this and it gives me a place that I can bring and mount the indicators to if I do wanna get them out from behind the panniers here. So I'm sort of pleased that it's going to serve two purposes. All right, well that's it, job done. So I'm pretty comfortable now, this is going to be strong enough to take the weight of the fuel and anything I put in this box. I'll let you know if it breaks in any way, just so we can maybe improve on the design, but I'm pretty comfortable it's going to do the job. The next job I'm gonna to do to this bike is to add some LED lights to another one of Donovan's racks at the front of the bike. But until then, take care, ride safely, and I'll see you soon. Bye.